Good evening. And the shenanigans have already begun. We are having technical difficulties, but guess what? We are um, not discouraged. We're having good trouble, as I said just before we came on, Brother Kai. So good evening. Welcome to Ignite. This is our 7 p.m. faith-based um, video stream, and we have a treat for you this evening. Before I bring on um, our guest, I have just a few announcements for you. Well, better yet, no, I am going to bring on our guests, and then we can do our announcements together. So I will bring on Pastor Kyle first and foremost. How are you, sir? Um, I am good overall, but this is the week that the AC in my section of the church, where my office is, decided to poop out on me. So it is, it is hot. <laughs> I'm oh so man! I'm so sorry. What, it, That's it. I'm moving back to Minnesota. This is it. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, of all the time. I mean, it was raining all last week. It was nice, cool weather. So tornado, then the air conditioner goes out, right? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Right. Let us bring on brother Kai. Ooh, cut off. There we go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How are you, my brother? I am good. I'm good. Uh, finishing up school. This is our last week of finals. One more paper to go, and then I get a couple weeks, and then I am in uh, Greek class, like, every day, four hours a day. Yeah. Do you see my eyes? <laughs> Happy summer, right? <laughs> We're in, so we have some, and I don't know how to um, describe it properly, but the way that United goes is, and it's going to change to a traditional three semester year, you know, um, mm -hmm. spring, fall, summer. But right now, I feel like it's all year round and something else. So I really yeah. want to get a break. <laughs> My last class is the 13th, but I'm asking for grace from a couple of um, professors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleading the blood of Jesus, saying, Lord, help. <laughs> Lord, help. Listen. So, so, well, well, hopefully tonight, while we're talking about creative expressions of faith, maybe you'll learn something from our actress, something from our singer-songwriter, something from our artist. So you will be able, be able to go in and give a moving reason as to why you need a little grace. There you go. There you go. I'm, you put me all on the spot, sisters. I need y'all to come and help me out. So I've got just a few announcements for you. Um, we've been on several times this week wanting to help you stay connected at the Community of Possibilities and Transformation. So we got you all the way through Wednesday. There's one more opportunity this week for you to come and lift your voice and sing with us. Choir rehearsal with the amazing Kimberly Bowie and our Minister of Music, Marty Bowie, is Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Here's the thing. You do not have to be a member of St. Mark United Methodist Church just to participate. You can just come sing. Right? So most of the time you have to go through a discipleship class. You have to go through, you know, we, we hair follicles. We want your firstborn child and a whole bunch of other things. Not in this case. We're just asking people to come fellowship and sing. Isn't that awesome? And then on June 5th, we have graduation Sunday. Um, we are asking all of the St. Mark um, graduates from 2021, because I don't know if you guys have heard or not, we were in a pandemic, right? We want to celebrate those graduates in person. So whether it's hair school, whether it's technical college, whether I keep saying a life experience, I'm just, some people are graduating from some, from some strong things in their life circumstance, what life circumstances, whether it's high school, middle school, preschool, Whatever it is, we just want to love on you. So we will be blessed by Dr. K. Monk Morgan. She will be sharing the word for that day. So we just ask that you come out and enjoy us. And if you're not a graduate, we just ask for you to come to church that Sunday. Come see some folks that you haven't seen in a while. Um, I have one more announcement. I'll wait to give that at the end of our broadcast. But without further ado, I would like to bring on our guest. So... If you're in the green room, um, know that I'm coming your way. I'm coming down your street, and I'm going to go in alphabetical order. So, Miss Brittany, beautiful, low, how are you? 
Hi, I'm doing great, Pastor Yolanda. How are you guys? It is so nice to meet you. I will let um, Kyle introduce you. We heard that you were just, she doesn't look like she was just had a full front yard for your children. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did. I did. And I was like semi stressed out. Like, how do I get you guys to go home in the nicest way possible? <laughs> Which house can I take you to? I was yeah. like, Lindsay, you're going to have to like go over there and get her children. <laughs> And that will be the sign to break up the party in her front yard. Yeah, there's like at least six or seven kids. Only two of them are mine. Are mine, so I. So I still let them to the house. You're the Kool Aid house. I guess so. We don't do Kool Aid, but I my mom was the Kool Aid house. So yeah, we'll, we did popsicles tonight. So yeah, I guess popsicle house. Yeah. Pop are great. We'll popsicle yeah, water you've play. Had, you've had, so, had the water going in your yard this week. Yeah, and so I know, it right? attracts all of the neighborhood children. So, I know. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to, to have you on, Brittany. Um, Brittany moved to the, our neighborhood um, six, eight months ago. Was yeah, in August. The beginning of the school year, August. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so we've been able to kind of get to know Brittany a bit over the over the months. And, and your kids just wonderful amazing children oh, i love them <laughs> they're so great uh, moved up from texas correct? yes yep yeah. dallas area mm -hmm. uh and uh I, in a lot of ways we're, yeah that's right uh, we got kai down in austin and oh, cool. a lot of texas okay. connections so um uh so in, in many ways i feel like i'm still getting to know a lot of your story and uh and especially your history with art and so forth. And so yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing a bit more of your your story and your uh, your journey and uh, journey of faith too. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. And I see Miss DeAsia is, her camera's off. So we will come back to her. So that means that we get to go to the beautiful Tasha McIntosh. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, she is prepared. Backdrop and lipstick, <laughs> lips popping. Hello. Hey, we do this a lot. <laughs> so, Tasha, oh, wow. how are you? I'm doing great. So glad to be with you guys this afternoon. We're glad that you are here. Tell us how you know Kai Green. I, Kai is from Arkansas. Woo woo. No, we, uh, him and my husband, became great friends and then I met him through my husband and we from a little small country town in Arkansas and and uh we've been knowing him for some years and so yeah he was in Texas and now we moved to Texas so it was just good to reconnect with him again so you have all the tea yes well not a little bit <laughs> Just um, yeah, so I am like I'm I'm super excited to have uh, uh, I have to put all the stuff out there. I'm super excited to have co-pastor uh, Tasha McIntosh with us slash singer slash songwriter. Uh, in fact, I am going to let me post this in the comments real quick for all of our viewers. If you get a little time later, uh, you can actually go check out Tasha's uh, uh, music video over on YouTube. Uh, she has a song called uh, Chosen. Um, it's a great song. Let me tell you something. In Arkansas, see, we don't have any professional teams, so everybody's like an Arkansas Razorback fan. It's the same thing. If somebody from your community does anything, you root for it with all that you have. So Tasha's uh, just a, a multi-talented person. Uh, like I said, her and her husband now are in the Arlington area where they pastor Transformation Worship Church. Uh, they've been in ministry for over 20 years. Uh, they were a part of the Word Family Church in Camden, Arkansas, back in 12 year, for 12 years. And in 2012, ta 2012 Tasha um, was a member of a Christian rock band for two years. Yes, everybody, a Christian yeah. rock band. Okay, and yes, she does gospel, but. Yeah. So we'll talk about, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, and then uh, she also performed uh, for KTV, which is our new station back home in Little Rock, Arkansas for a Christmas special. She smashed it. Okay. And like I said, she recorded her first video called Chosen, which I dropped you a link from. Uh, link from. So since what, 2018, Tasha and uh, Arabian, excuse me, past Arabian McIntosh, 
hey. you know, you get to call your friends just by the last name. Uh, they were led to move to Austin, Texas. They started this new ministry and they still been serving there today. So Tasha, hats off to you and Ray. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. I look forward to diving into, you know, more about what you do and how you got where you are. Awesome. Awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> And last and definitely not least, straight out of the car, <laughs> is hello. the beautiful DeAsia Davis. So hello, I hello. Know and had the privilege of watching Miss DeAsia just grow and blossom in multiple um, facets of her life. First and foremost, she is a lover of God. She attends the local rock Christian fellowship under the leadership of Sister Kristen Brethet. And did I just not give her correct last name? Doctor. She just got married. <laughs> it seemed like yesterday, but Pastor Kristen Gunter. Um, she and her husband serve in many capacities at their church. I think um, you've been in, on the praise team. I've seen yeah. you working um, in multiple facets of the church. But most importantly, she is a mom. I think overnight her family doubled. Kind of <laughs> one day she had two children and then Lord gave her twins and now she has four and she's doing the darn thing. She is an actress. She's been in two movies that I know of. There may be another that I've kind of heard of. So she's been in Pearl One and Pearl Two. You can view them on Amazon, Amazon. I believe. Yes. And mm -hmm. then also a model. I mean, I've seen seeing her in her capacity as a mom and then seeing her model in her natural beauty and then seeing her ma ma a model in different um, variations of garb, I tell you, just to see her work, it's, it's amazing. Welcome, DeAsia. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everyone. So you just got out of the car. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and decided to come in and then just be on screen as if nothing ever happened in a quiet <laughs> environment. So tell us just a little bit about what brought you into modeling and what brought you into um, the world of film. Well, uh, I've been modeling since I was about 18. Um, did I did some fashion shows, uh, some hair shows that were that are local. Um, I've repped clothing lines, different clothing brands. Um, as I gotten older and more knowledgeable about the modeling scene, I started to do my own research and find out um, more of the things that I enjoyed as far as um, exactly where I wanted to go with modeling. Um, and currently, I am working on a mentorship for young girls so to kind of give them a foundation to if this is something they want to do um, as far as modeling themselves. So that's kind of been the little journey of modeling. So I'm going to throw this out there and you're probably going to get yes, mad at me, but not only is she an actress and a model, but she is a TikToker extraordinary. Okay. <laughs> I'm so envious of her TikTok game. Okay. <laughs> she does it with, she has some on her own, but she does it with her oldest son. And I tell you, they are adorable. So one day we've got a plan that I'm going, to, we're going to do a TikTok together here in the near future. And yes. I'm I'm going to bring my skills to the camera. <laughs> yes. So Kyle, let you go on with the first question. Right. Well, let's also make sure for our listeners that we set the stage for tonight. So like we said, tonight's discussion is about uh, creative expressions of faith. And uh, primarily what we want to do tonight, we just we want to just talk about how we show up, you know, and and sometimes we talk about being people of faith. Uh, sometimes there's other parts of our identity that we feel like we put on the side or we feel like we can't express those things. And, and, and sometimes we think, OK, well, it's time for me to go to church. And the only way I do church is I'm going to listen to the preacher. Uh, so tonight's discussion is really about um, encouraging you to think about the gifts and the talents that God has given you, uh, particularly those that relate to the arts. And tonight you're going to hear uh, our, our wonderful guests just kind of walk you through their faith journey, uh, walk you through what they do, you know, what they do out in the world. But then also talking about how that relates to what they do in the church from music and songwriting to acting and mentoring uh, to even the creative processes when it comes to art uh, and, and just being creative. You know, our, our Lord made us and to be 
very, I'll say very, very creative. Uh, the scripture that got us here really quickly was Exodus uh, chapter 35, verses 30 through 35. And it says, then Moses said to the Israelites, see, the Lord has called by name Bezel, son of Uri, son of Hur, uh, of the tribe of Judah. And this is the part we're really focusing in. And it says he was he has filled him with divine spirit, with skill, intelligence and knowledge in every kind of craft to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver and bronze, in cutting stones for setting and in carving wood and in every kind of craft. And he was inspired and he is inspiring him to teach both him and Oliah, son of I'm going to mess this name up. Ah, Amishak, I always do that, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with the skill to do every kind of work done by an artisan or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns and in fine linen or by a weaver, by any sort of artesian or skilled designer. Okay, so the reason I, I bring this up, it was talking specifically there about a couple of people uh, from this particular experience, but ideally the point that we want to lift up today is that God has embedded so much talent into all of us, all these different artistic abilities. Some of us might be solo singers. Some of us might be choir people. Some of us might be people who like to do sketch art, right? Whether that's acting like uh, or sketches and things like that, or they might be pen and paper. So tonight we want to encourage you to just open up your hearts and minds and thinking about your ta talents and skills. And as we talk to our guests, think about how you could use the gifts that God has given you to have a creative expression of faith. All right. Now that we got the groundwork laid out, that's like that's the housekeeping part. So now we get to do the fun part and really jump in, into the discussion. If you're watching this, please remember uh, you can check us out on St. Mark. Put your comments. If you have questions for our guests or something you want us to ask or clarify, put it in the comments. We'll bring it up and we'll make sure that we get your response before we check out of here tonight. All right. So housekeeping is good. So we like to start out with a kind of a basic question for everyone. Um, and uh, I guess I'll put uh, my friend Tasha on the spot first. And I, I, have, a, I have a question for Tasha, which is, uh, would you just tell us uh, just just briefly about your faith journey? Like, you know, what was the what was the moment that you really uh, kind of that moment where you went, you know, this is this is my faith. Right. This is this is what I believe. And this is what I want to do with my life. Kind of that that awakening, if you will. Uh oh, we lost your audio. Uh -oh. Can't hear you yet. Uh huh. Keep, will you try logging out and maybe pop back in? Okay. Uh, but we'll pivot to one of our other guests. Do, do. Anybody ready? Like a like a little. Uh, I got it. No. If you call on somebody, suddenly their sound isn't going to be working either. <laughs> <laughs> what? And you know. You can't do the avoid eye contact thing on Zoom because yeah. you're looking at the camera. So right. you can't be like staring off and trying not to be seen. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. So, um, I don't mind sharing. Okay. Please do. <laughs> yeah. So I started out, I was born into a, a family that was already Christian parents. We already attended church from very young. Um, but we had, my dad was in the military, so we kind of jumped around different, whatever church was like on the military base was the denomination that we were. So we were Presbyterian, we were Baptist, like whatever was like the closest to what my parents believed we went. Um, and, you know, so that just, you know, created a lot of diversity in my experiences of seeing what kinds of uh, ways that people worship and the ways that people experience God as in the Christian faith. Um, and, you know, I, I was probably like six or so when I started to, um, you know, talk about like salvation, things like that, like that age where they want to get baptized. Like I did a little sprinkle Presbyterian baptism, but it wasn't until I was like 13 that I was like, wait, this is something. Like I remember mm. just being um, in middle school and having a really hard time with middle school because it was middle school. Like, what, like it should be eliminated from like life, but it has to happen. So I was there and it was hard and I had a hard time socially with people. And I remember just crying in my room one night and feeling very alone. And it was the first time I could tangibly feel like I could feel the presence of God, Jesus specifically in my room, comforting me and saying that I'm not alone. And 
it became so real to me because it wasn't like someone was telling me about Jesus. Like it, I, I was experiencing it myself. So I had asked and went back to the church we were going to and asked if I could get baptized in this new faith that I felt like I had found on my own. Um, and that's when we did like the baptism dunk. Not that one is better than the other. It's just like, you know, it's just the, you know, step I felt like I wanted to take then at 13. So um, that kind of spun me into um, this, this relationship with God that I was just trying to understand who God was, who I was as a Christian, as a daughter of God. And, um, and I, you know, when, like, I feel like when I hit 20 in college, it got really serious, but also very, very confusing. Cause then I started to question all the things that I had mm -hmm. learned. And I'm like, wait a second, some of this doesn't make sense. The God that I was like learning about from age six till now doesn't make sense with the God that I'm experiencing in the world that exists for everyone else. And it started to break down a lot of those, uh, you know, previous like notions I had on who God was. And that was a very confusing time for me as I tried to like, I didn't want to let go of God because I knew that he was real. And I always believed that he, that he will be. And, um, but it was hard because the church was not helping me answer those questions. Like I was mm. having a hard time finding churches and I, like, and just communities that were helping me actually understand who God was or who I thought God was. Um, so, so yeah, so that was in 20, so about, it's been 14 years since then. So, um, it's been a journey of now going into motherhood and I was married at one point and like, you know, just understanding like, what does that mean as a, as a creative person, as an adult? Um, it just looks differently when you're younger and you have faith, it looks so different when you're an adult and like real life hits you mm -hmm. and you, um, I don't know, you just, the questioning happens more, but it's not in a bad way. It's like, like, let me understand God more. Let me understand, like, who, what does this mean for me? What does my relationship look like, like, personally, an individual person? Yeah. Um, so I still, I still feel like I'm there. I don't know that I ever will not be there. And I think that's a good thing, right? Like, absolutely. Um, so that's kind of brought me up to this place that I'm in now. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well thank said. you. Well said. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sister Tasha, is your mic working? Testing one, two. Yes, you are in the house. Yay! No. <laughs> uh, so you're ready for me to answer that question? Sure, sure. sure. Yes, just, just, yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, I grew up in the church, you know, in a little country church in Arkansas. Kind of, uh, you know, in the Bible, Bill, oh, you're kind of introduced to Jesus Christ in the church at an early age. And you know, you know it's kind of like that's just something you do. You go to church, you know, in the south, most people go to church. And um I can say that I am uh grateful for the foundation. You know, growing up as a, a Baptist young lady, you going to learn about the uh, salvation message. That's one thing you're going to learn about growing up, you know, in the Baptist church, you're going to learn the salvation message and, you know, just going to church, really not having revelation knowledge of really what Christ is all about. Not really until I grew up more, you know, and like I said, I'm grateful for the foundation. And I kind of got to a point in my life where, you know, going to church and just hearing the salvation, I knew it had to be more. I knew it had to be more to it. And so uh, as I grew in my journey, of course, went to college, wild out, done all the college stuff, you know, straight away, you know, and then ended up coming to a point in my life to where, you know, I remember the, the incorruptible seed that was, uh, sown in my life. And I came to a point to where I'm like, you know, I'm tired of the partying. I'm tired of, tired of all this kind of stuff. And I knew Jesus Christ was real. And so I ended up uh, right after college go, uh, getting back in church. I ended up, uh, me and my husband, we ended up getting married. I got married really young. Me and my husband have been married for, uh, we've been together 25 years. And so uh, when we got married, we decided that we wanted to, uh, wanted Christ to be head of our marriage. And so we made a decision that we wanted to get back in church. And so we ended up getting back in church. And like I said, you know, it, it, it was still a void there. It was still, something wasn't right. It, I've had a longing for more. 
I was like, it's got to be more. And so I remember in 20, it was 20. Well, let me see my oldest son. Look, I got so many kids, y'all. I don't know. Bear with me. No, <laughs> my oldest son, uh, I got pregnant with him out of wedlock. And I was like, Lord, I know you're not pleased in my with my life. And so that's when I end up saying, you know, it's got to be more. I'm tired of going through the motion, doing the church thing. And so I ended up going to church and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was like when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, the light popped on. I could I could see him high lifted up. Just everything just came, you know, opened my eyes to so many things. And, you know. That's kind of like my journey. And I've been, you know, loving God ever since. Done had some, you know, ups and downs like all of us, but been really growing in Christ ever since. So it's kind of like yeah. a little sketchy. <laughs> but yeah, that's how it went. So that is um that's wonderful. Like I I, I was trying to wait and let everybody go, but y'all are y'all have said so much already. Uh and 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 before we get to our next guest, I do want to say this. I realize that you know we're inviting you on this platform, and I, I want to thank you all right now for just being so authentic and so transparent, you know, about your journeys. And because this is one of the things that gets me is that and Brittany said it so well. No, this guy I've been learning about is not the same guy. Like now that I'm an adult, the way my life has come together and I'm experiencing things, it's yeah. it's not the same. And so she expressed that uncertainty. Tasha, you did the same thing, and you you said something that's so powerful to me. That that idea of it, now you're a co-pastor, right? People for like we have lives. You said I went to college and I wild out. Amen. I co-signed. Right here, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> same thing. So I want people to hear that, like it, the, it, your life is a trajectory, right? And you have these experiences, you have these moments of uncertainty. But like the guests we have sitting here, there's so much more to your story. Um, yeah. So I, I could say ten other things, but I, I know, I know, Miss Davis is ready to go. So I'm, I'm on pins and needles to hear. <laughs> well, my journey actually is kind of similar to both Miss Lowe and Miss McIntosh. Uh, I grew up in a church. Uh, my mother was a single parent and we, I felt like we went through different seasons of life as well. One day, one season, we were Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, the next, we were you know, Christians. You know, we were going on Sundays. Some days we went on Saturday. Some days we didn't <laughs> eat meat. Some days, you know, I was confused growing up. I, I'm not even going to lie. But I always said, you know, growing up, now that I look back at my life, God had always had his hand on me. And it may have been because I was so oblivious to life. I always say I was the vulnerable child, the one who I paid attention, but I really didn't. I just kind of went with the wind. So um, during my years of growing up uh, high school, I think I stopped going to church for a little bit uh, around high school, middle, the end of middle school, high school area. And so I wasn't going to church. I was just living life, just however it may have been at that time. I remember going to college and trying to branch out and find myself. And I remember getting, um, I remember getting expelled from college. And I tell this story and everyone laughs, but I, I got expelled from college. And I wasn't known as a fighter, but I, I was triggered during this season of life. And I, and I had an episode where I did fight and I fought often. And so I ended up getting expelled from college. But as I look back um, today on that journey, that was God saving me yet again from mm -hmm. something that I was walking into that I was not ready for. Um, I had, a, I was wilding out. I was getting, I was actually, I'm going to say I was getting ready to wild out really bad. And I felt that God said, let me put a stop to this before you get into something that you can't get yourself out of. And I, I believe that when that altercation came and I was expelled from school, that was God saving me because um, life was getting ready to turn for the worse. Uh, I, and I, too, ended up having a baby out of wedlock. Um, and it, me and my husband actually did not marry until about five years later. Um, I did end up marrying my child's father. And again, I believe that was God's way of saying, um, I'm going to make, I, this is what I have set for you, this path. And you're going to follow that path that I have set for you, whether you want to or not. 
Um, and I know we always say baby can't make a man stay, but I definitely believe that a baby made a relationship grow and um, stay together. And that is the truth of it all. I do think that being young as I was, um, I may not have stayed with my partner had I not gone through everything that I did and 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 got pregnant. <laughs> so um, we, when that happened, we both sat down together and we decided that we are going to fight not only ourselves, but fight for our marriage, fight to be together, together, fight for our family. Um, we sat down and we decided that we wanted to go to church. We wanted to find a church home for ourselves. Um, my husband, he had a church with his, his mother and his father that he was going to, but we, we sat down and we talked about finding ourselves together um, outside of our, our parents and our siblings. Um, in doing so, that landed us uh, upon the Church of Rock Christian Fellowship, and we've been involved with them. Uh, my husband is on the praise team, and I was on the praise team until um, I had my twins. So um, now I just cheer him on, and I just I just listen to him sing every Sunday. <laughs> my journey. Wow. So let me just say, first of all, to all three of you, None of y'all look like a day over 16. So let's, <laughs> let's just discuss that. So I think it is so awesome because we're celebrating mothers. We're celebrating um, the creativity and art that um, God has blessed you with. But we're also really wanting to hone in on motherhood and that gift from God. And last week, we had mothers um, that experienced maybe a non-traditional trajectory to motherhood. And this week, I mean, again, we have the God of our grandmothers, you know, the God that you couldn't do anything and the skirt needed to be down to your knees and you, you couldn't swear. And you went to church on Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, <laughs> you had to learn the scriptures backwards and forwards and to speak in tongues. And then life hits and you, you know how to play church but you haven't learned to apply your faith. And that's where that yearning for something more actually begins to manifest, I believe, in between, in, in, within us. And then you add a baby to it, okay? If you have never prayed before, huh, you get to praying prior to delivery. And then once you hold that baby for the first time in your arms, um, it, it's a whole different experience. So I just thank God for your stories. I thank God for um, your waywardness, the sketchiness. Um, I thank God for being expelled from school and your Peter spirit. Um, it's, I really love meeting Christians who have been through something and endured. That's not to take anything away from people that knew that they were going to be in the ministry since the second grade. But I believe that when you actually have the opportunity to um, live like your way and then have that yearning come over you and you just don't want to do life alone anymore and you are compelled by the Holy Spirit to, to, to redirect, um, it's a powerful experience. And when you see it in young people, it's infectious because there's so many other things that y'all could be focusing on right now. Far be it from being married with children and husbands and loving the Lord and serving on Sundays and being in church, but um, to look good doing it and then to be bringing your children into um, a life of faith as well. I think it's just, it's, it's phenomenal. So I commend each of you and I just really hope that um, you know what type of example you're actually, you're doing what the Bible says, go and make disciples by living your life in the manner that you're actually living. It. So thank you. Yeah, and it's also a reminder of how uh, complex and, and messy uh, our spiritual journeys often are. That, you know, we assume this, uh, this straight trajectory uh, that just, you know, grow, 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 grow. And um, it's, it's so much more complicated than that. 
and it's got twists and turns and sometimes it's an anti-trajectory and it you know curves back around just a little bit of backslide just a little bit of backslide just a little bit um but you know i've sat with with parents who are just in agony about to seeing where, what their kids are going through and where they think oh my kid is you know, um going through this time and they're falling away from the faith and all this and um you know, and, and sometimes you just have to encourage parents like you, you don't know what the future holds and you can't control it anyway. And, uh, and here I think all of you have shown, you know, in, in various ways, how, you know, you get to a, a new stage of life, you, you wrestle through new things and it, it can bring us back. It can deepen us in ways It can make us question and you know ask those hard questions and seek those good answers and i think it's all important so thank you for sharing that with uh, all of you and thank you for bringing about the just the point that questions are acceptable yeah you know yes. i think um we are all were probably raised during a time where you do as I, you do as i say not as i do and you don't ask any questions whatsoever i, I told you that the lord exists so you just accept it right yeah. so um then there comes a point in time where you're like okay who is this god that you told me exists and prove it yeah prove yeah it. if you're if you're at a church where you can't ask questions um I, i'm not going to tell people to leave their church but also like you have to have space to to ask questions and and uh and, and people have to give you room for that god is big enough to handle yeah. your questions god is big enough to handle your disbelief because even at this point i mean as mothers i know that from a very early age my children are a little older but um when they don't crawl on time everybody else is crawling everybody else got their first tooth already you know the next door neighbor's boy he's reading already this one's already doing it but so we began to compare ourselves you know this one can quote the constitution and my child can't see how long lord must i endure so you began to question you know not just for your own life but then you began to question the gifts and what god has put into your child so it can either pull you away or it can compel you to go deeper so <clears throat> i just appreciate the fact that you guys have highlighted the fact that this is not an easy walk. Being a Christian is not for a faint of heart, for the faint of heart, okay? Just let's put that out there. I love, um, my favorite disciple is Peter, just FYI, for all of the, for those of y'all who don't know. Um, Peter was the disciple that when Jesus was finally arrested, that he pulled out his sword and he cut the ear off, right? And Jesus picked, a, it picked up the ear and he's like, no, that's not what we're yeah. here for. I had to be, uh, that spirit had to be excised out of me so I can um, um, identify with you, Sister Deasia, <laughs> going through some of those things to where um, all my life I had to fight, right? And you get to a point to where you're like, what am I fighting for? And you get to the point to where you know the one who fights for you, right? I think Exodus 14, 14 says, you don't have to clap back. You need only be still and I'll clap back for you. Right. So I just thank God for it being for, for you guys being women and sharing that in such a compelling way. Brother Kyle, do you want to go forward? You did a question. Pastor Kyle. Next yeah. Question. Yeah. Let's keep going. Cause last time we got through two questions with our guests <laughs> and I would love to hear more from our, our panelists. So, um, so yeah, um, you know, uh, curious about how each of you have kind of discovered your talents and your skills and, um, and, and, you know, Brittany, I'll ask you if you're, you know, if you don't mind, uh, starting us off too, cause I'm curious, uh, what your, um, artistic expressions have typically looked like or what, uh, what you, um, what uh, what kind of artwork you have typically done, what that looks like, and then kind of how you came to discover that. And we can go through the, the rest of the panelists as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my uh, artistic journey kind of started young. I had tried 
archaeology, paleontology. I was like collecting rocks as a kid. I thought I was going to be an astronaut. I went to space camp. I was like in space club. Like I thought I was going to have like this cool scientist life. Um, but then I was like, they were like, you have to do math. And I was like, math, <laughs> math is not like a thing. Like it should be like addition, multiplication, division, and like subtraction. Like it should stop like there. Like anything beyond that, it's like unnecessary. So the fact that like I would have to come up with the calculations to like get myself in a space shuttle and get to the moon like that was just like too much of a risk so i i just i went to space camp and i was like this is a lot it was fun and they had dip and dots there and that was great but um so art came to me by way of my mom so she was also an artist and she was um into like drawing and illustration so was my my grandmother her mom and so when I started showing some interest in art, my mom just gave me her old oil pastels from the 70s that she had used a little bit. You know, I still have them. And so I practiced with that and I realized like, wow, like there's some natural talent there that I didn't really know. Uh, I don't really, I can't even pinpoint the moment or like what I was learning it from, but I just started sketching and sketch pads. Um, I would sit at church. My dad was a, the AV guy. And so at the worship practices, I would sit there and, and you know, in the, in the seats and just sketch while he was at his practices and stuff. And, um, and I loved it. And so it was middle school time that I started to do it like in school and be a little bit more serious about it and carry that through high school. Um, and so I, I got serious about art in high school. I wanted to go to school for like college for art. And I did, um, I ended up studying uh, studio arts as my major. So I was working in ceramics and painting and illustration, drawing. And um, and then I minored in anthropology because I had had this interest still from childhood pretty much on humanity and trying to understand like how humans behave with each other and with their faith and um, how does art even take, take place in that. So that's kind of what I'm studying even now. Um, in grad school too, is that connection between like art, religion, humanity, things like that. So, um, so yeah, so I was working in a lot of different mixed media. And so I started out doing a lot of like layer type collage paintings. So I would use things like old windows or doors that I would find and I would paint like on double sides of the paint or I would collage paper on one side and paint on the other. Um, and that kind of moved on to painting with acrylic paint and also using gold leaf. So like the really flimsy, like copper leaf you could buy at the craft store um, that blows away really easily, but using that in place of the skin tone, instead of choosing a skin tone, I would just use the metal leaf instead. And it's been evolving. So like I, I kind of have a grasshopper, grasshopper type mind because I'll be into one thing for a little while and then move on to the next. And right now it's paper cutting. I'm really into paper cutting. So like um, being able to have uh, just, just little exacto knives and, and, uh, what is it called? Like just, you know, carving into it and making different designs and illustrations through paper cutting. And I also got into woodblock prints. There's even one behind me where it's just a, a carved piece of wood and then you print it with ink and um, on piece of paper. And then I have that framed from a couple of years back. Um, and so, so yeah, it's kind of evolved from there, but professionally I do design work. So it's, uh, it started maybe about six years ago where I actually started working in graphic design. And so I do computer-based artistic, you know, expression. And I work for an education company currently, but I also do freelance design for different um, organizations, nonprofits. And um, recently when I was in Dallas, I worked for uh, the Dallas Museum of Art and did some of their marketing and exhibition design stuff too. And so it's kind of been all over the map. Um, worked for a magazine and Planet Planet Magazine. I worked for them for a little while too. So it kind of anything that came my way, I was like, let's just try it. Let's see if I can do this. And, and it was just fun to, to try different medium of design and um, I, I've kind of landed in graphic design just mostly with publications and things like that. So I've, I've enjoyed this little space that I'm in right now. I would imagine there's a lot more opportunity in graphic design. Uh, oh, yeah. and that, that would be my guess. Oh, um, yeah. I, I love that. I mean, I love that you just sort of like wherever the, the artistic the wind wind flows. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to tell you like, I, I can attribute this to God because every opportunity I've had and the, the jobs I've had, it doesn't make any sense why I got the job. Like one I applied for at the interview, I was like, I don't even know what this job is for. Like I just saw it said digital designer and I applied to it. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. The first day of work, I sat there and I was like, what is this job about? Like I had no clue. <laughs> and luckily enough, I had this incredible boss, a couple years older than me. 
and she uh, was also a mom and she was just like, I was like, you know, I don't really know what we're doing here. And she was like, don't worry. I didn't either. I saw that you had talent in other ways. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know. So you don't know how to do HTML code. I'm going to teach you. I learned the same way. And so I was like, and it happened over and over, even working at the magazine. I had no clue how to like create a layout for a magazine publication when I first got started, but I was hired based on the fact that I had artistic ability and they just had faith in me. And I was kind of like blown away by that, but it, but it, it was nothing other than God providing opportunities for me and my kids because design started synonymously or not. So it happened at the same time. Um, uh, synchronously is the word I'm looking for with me becoming a single mom. My divorce kind of necessitated me getting into design because I had been a stay at home mom previously. And, um, and so I just felt like it was just a beautiful way that God was providing for me and my kids in a path that I had not seen for myself. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's, That's amazing. Virtual. I think there's a, that the Bible says your gifts will make way for you. Mm-hmm. But so many times I think we live in a box and we're too scared to try uh, try out those gifts. But it seems like you have just been willing to allow God to guide you into whatever it is that you're feeling at the moment. And that that's so powerful, right? A lot of us sit behind desks for 40, 47 years, right? And we 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 work to live. Do you know what I mean? And I think you're doing the exact opposite. So that's Thank you. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Absolutely. I think I'm, the not, I'm not applying for just jobs. I don't know. What yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think one of the cool things, too, is what came to mind when she was talking was I, I thought flowing and I thought open. Right. Uh, so many times we think that, you know, we look at God as if he is a uh, um, what I'm going to say, like a, a river, you know, or I'm not being a river. It's just it's got to be this one thing. That's all God has for me. It can it can be nothing else. And I like to remind people that think of God as a flow, right? That that there's different current. If you get in, if you do get in a river, there's some parts of the river that go a little faster, some parts that are a little deeper. And that's the same thing with our lives. But when you have your talents and your skills, and we just learn to be open, right? That gives us more opportunity to just get in the flow of God. Because you like, like you said, you, you don't know where you're going to go. But it, I think that idea of us just being open so that the flow of God can carry us. Right. Is such an opportunity that we can uh, all implement into our lives. So thank you for that, Brittany. Thank you. Amen. And so the work behind you is yours as well. Brittany? Um, some of it is some of it's actual. Just this one here is mine's woodcut. And then there's some other to the oh, wrong direction. There's the, these gestural illustrations that I did in college um, that are there. And other things I've collected from other artists throughout the years. Beautiful yeah. work in space. Thank Beautiful you. Work. Thank you so much. And I, I did want to mention, like, all of these things were not without struggle. Like, I don't want it to sound like everything was just, like, fell in line perfectly. The opportunities mm-hmm. came, but there were a lot of no's. I probably applied to, like, 300 jobs over a certain amount of years. And I've heard no's in like the worst ways. Like, were you interviewing? And they're like, we're going to give you the job. And they never contact you after that. So like, you know, the most disappointing ways. And so in the confusing, baffling ways where cl- doors have been closed, yeah. you don't understand why. But like, like you said with that, like Kai talking about just being open, you know, I think that's, that's a big thing. You just have to keep picking yourself up because I could have easily been like, man, I'm not talented enough. I'm not experienced enough. And I wasn't. For a lot of the jobs I applied to, I wasn't. But there was the one who was going to give me that opportunity. But I had to go through a lot of people saying, like, you have no, we hate your resume. Someone told me they hated the way my resume was designed. They're like, we don't like the lines on your resume. Like, you know, so it's just, you have to be open to the the, the negative uh, parts that you're going to walk you towards where you're going to be. Right, right. Tasha. Yes. So my journey <laughs> into um, singing. Well, um, I would say that uh, growing up, I grew up in a, a musical family. I did. I grew up around music. My dad was an amazing artist. He really was. He played the guitar. He played the drums. He uh, actually uh, used to play and travel around the world. He was uh, a musician for you. Um, some of you probably have heard of uh, the late B.B. King. My daddy uh, was his drummer at one point. He played the bass guitar with him. He traveled all over everywhere. 
So I grew up around music, especially from the South. The blues was very, very popular. I'm telling you. So that's all I heard. Growing up as a little girl, my dad had a nightclub as well in Arkansas. And uh, I grew, that's what I'm saying. I grew up around music. So I started to have a love for music. Uh, My homecoming year in Camden, uh, Arkansas, I graduated in 95. I was chose to uh, sing the homecoming theme. So, and then, you know, growing up in church, singing in the Washita District yeah. Choir, just all kind of uh, things, uh, being a part of singing, it was in me. But uh, as uh, I kind of, after I came back, I also sung even in college at the University at Pine Bluff. I was in the Vesper Choir, sung there, and just continuing to uh kind of grow and develop. I personally, as much as I sung in my life and as much as I was around music, I have always been so shy and so afraid to sing. Always have been super afraid, super nervous about singing. I always compared myself to other people and I really didn't think I was good enough. I struggled with that for years, not uh, thinking I was good enough because I hung around all my friends. They were amazing singers. And I always had a problem with comparing myself to other people. And I always thought they were better than me. And so God had to really deal with me about, you know, comparing myself. And as I grew, uh, you know, grew in my relationship with him, He kind of told me, you know, like, it's not about, you know, who's the best. It's about you giving me an offering. And, you know, and it took me years to really get that revelation about, you know, it's about you, what I gave you, you giving it back to me. And when I finally got that revelation, it, it seemed like that's when doors started opening for me. I got out of this competition mode, which so many singers get caught up in, especially in the church. But I'm so glad that God gave me revelation early, you know, and now I can freely worship. I can sing anywhere because I don't care what anybody thinks because I know that I'm offering worship unto him. So that freed me in a whole different light. And that's when I said God opened doors for me. I ended up being a part of a Christian rock band, which was super cool because I love music. I love all kind of genres of music and styles of music. I ended up in a Christian rock band. So it was like five white guys and me. Oh, it was so cool, though. <laughs> it was really cool. It was. But, you know, I understand why God had me with them. We were get together for two years. We traveled and um God had me uh, with that band for two years and God birthed something in me within that two years. Being with them, I learned that I was a songwriter. And, you know, growing up in the African-American church, black people, we can get your song and we can sing it. You know, we can, you know, we, whatever you do, a black person, oh, we going to sing this song. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. But when I ended up uh, joining this Christian rock band, I developed writing. They wrote their own music. You know, they was like, let's write. And I didn't even know I could even write music. But being around them, uh, God birthed that gift in me. And that's when I wrote the song Chosen. Uh, uh, In spending time with God and, you know, and reading his word and different things like that, God gave me the song Chosen. And it kind of uh, tells kind of my testimony of, you know, how I used to wonder why I was created. I wonder what my purpose was and, and how God spoke to me and told me that he had chose me to give glory to his name. And that's kind of the basis of the song. But, you know, God had, you know, he really showed me what he wanted to do in and through my life through singing. And it's something that I love to do. My children, I have a 22 year old. He sings and he plays the drums. I have a twin. Let me, wait a minute. Let me, y'all know I got, I told you I got so many. Okay. So my 22 year old, he sings and he plays the drums. 
I have a 19 year old, which our 19 year old was adopted. We adopted him when he was eight years old. And because he came into our family, we taught him how to play the bass. So my 18 year old, he plays the bass. And then I have a 15 year old. He actually goes to Grand Prairie Fine Arts Academy and he plays jazz piano, classical piano. He plays the upright bass. He plays the regular bass. bass. He plays the piano. He plays. He just about to play anything. And so they all have gotten that gift as well. And so God is just, you know, been good. I'm telling you, uh, you know, when we were talking earlier about children, you know, we, me and my husband tried to. We are bringing them up in the admonition of the Lord. And of course, my 22 year old and my 19 year old, they're doing their thing. But, you know, they know who Jesus Christ is. And I love when we get a chance to be together and worship God together. And I have all of them on the instruments and it's just a blessing. So that's kind of how my music I hadn't. I, I wrote two songs, um, but. Now that me and my husband kind of been in ministry, God has shifted me still doing praise and worship, but, you know, just kind of shifted me into um, ministering and teaching and preaching. But worship is my heart and it always will be. And so because it's just a part of me and my family. So. Uh, well, I've got that music video up on the next tab over. So when we're done here, uh, I'll be checking that out. <laughs> Now, keep in mind that a friend done my music video, so. <laughs> it's like, here's my disclaimer. Here's my disclaimer. That's right. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait to listen to it, because I could listen to you speak. Oh, my God. The Southern, y'all. The Southern, I'm, y'all. The Southern, I am so Southern. I can't help it. The people in in the South say I'm Southern, so. You just have that's just me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I um, uh, I hadn't, I, I, I had, <laughs> I had not been around Tasha before, and I, and I remember I, I met her husband, and he was telling me about her, and um, and and then he tells me, you know, well, she's like this this rock band, and I'm, you know, look, this is the South, and I thought, why is there a black woman in a rock band, like. <laughs> I was, it just, it, 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 it wasn't something you got in Camden. Like you weren't going to get this in Camden, Arkansas. Right. And uh, so I thought, I thought this is interesting. And then when I met her and I, I heard her speak and I went, now, wait a minute. Now, how does a Southern accent and then a rock, like how Lord really <laughs> how, how, how does this, um, uh, hey, but fearfully and wonderfully made. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I was going to say, though, is that in what you just shared with us, you know, you, you really shared your heart and it's coming through. And I hope people know this. Uh, their family, y'all, immensely talented. But what I one thing and I, I really want to make, I hope Ray is watching. Uh, they are some of the most hospitable people I've mm -hmm. ever met in my life. So that that generosity, it comes through in your voice. It comes through in your music ministry. And I just I just want to affirm you in that and just say thank you, friend. And to hear your story, um, I'm I am so blessed and just honored to know you guys and, and to know you and all that you're doing. Uh, and I hope people go check out the music video because despite a friend doing it, it's the <laughs> lyrics, the song is beautiful. It's beautiful. Praise God. Hey, we love people and you know that uh that southern we just you know it's just in us and we just love people and just love um you know giving what God has given us. Like I said, the story, I'm kind of like the uh other young lady, you know, it hasn't been perfect, it has been some ups and downs, but God gets the glory through it all. I'm telling you. Amen. Yes. Amen. I love what you said. It's not about who's the best. It's about giving God an offering. So powerful. Yes. So powerful. And I had to learn that. I'm telling you, all the insecurities and all the feeling not worthy, God really had to do a work in me and in my heart. He really did. And I'm grateful. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we'll move on to Sister DeAsia. Pastor Kyle, we've done it again, you know. Great and time flies by. I can't believe it's 8.04 already. But Sister DeAsia, tell us about how you came about using your gifts. 
Okay, so my gift actually started, <laughs> my parent, my mother and my brother owned a club. So it was just here for a short little bit, maybe a year, maybe two, I can't remember, it was during my high school years. They owned a club. And so me coming in underage, of course, it was my parents. So, or my, my mother, my brother, so no one ever carded me. I just came in, um, hanging with the, the grown folk and there would be people there would say, you know, Hey, you know, do you want to be in a video? Would you like to be a model for a video or something along that nature? So I would say I started off as a video fixing. I don't really like that term, but that is, that is how I started off. And so it would be local videos here in Wichita. And then, um, I wanted to branch out and I would do, again, like I spoke about, about hair shows and fashion shows um, with different hairstylists here in Wichita and different clothing lines. Um, and then I would um, go into, I'm sorry, my, my youngest son. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize. It's called multitasking motherhood. <laughs> He wanted to say hi, <laughs> but I um I would do fashion shows, uh, and different shows here in Wichita, and I think what what came about me wanting to put on my own type of mentorship and fashion shows, um, which I am in the beginning stages of that. God has told me over and over again, this is what I want you to do. And I have been that one that we were talking about, you know, taking that leap of faith and, and that fear, um, fear of um, not being successful or you know, maybe not being supported. So I, I, I am at a, a nine to five, you know, and I'm working and um, trying to figure out how to, to break away from that and do and be obedient to God. But one experience that, that I felt was God's sign was when I went to an audition one day and I walked in and I sat for two hours. I sat for two hours before anyone even noticed who I was or noticed uh, that I was here for, you know, to try on a designer's clothing line to to walk for someone. And it wasn't until I spoke up and said, hey, you know, I am here for an audition um, for someone's clothing line. And then, you know, I, I got to look like, oh, OK, you know, I, I was bigger than most of the, the young women that came in for their sh for the audition. I was bigger than most of them. And it wasn't until I showed them my walk that they noticed that I had some kind of power with behind, you know, wanting to be a model. And that was the, that was when the light I felt like clicked for me because I know that I look different. And I know that some of the, the young ladies here in Wichita look different. And sometimes the book is judged before it's even opened. Um, but for me, my walking is my power. It's almost like I think you guys have heard about Beyonce turning to Sasha Fierce when she gets on stage. Well, when I am in a show and I am modeling, I feel like I transform into a whole different person. I don't have to talk to anyone. Everything that I do is, is my body language. It's my facial expressions. It's how I walk. It's, it's me having a conversation with the runway. And I, that's what I enjoy. And so God spoke to me in several different ways about how to assist young ladies, not only in if modeling is something that they are interested in, but an, an etiquette course of teaching them how to be confident out the gate. You don't have to wait until you get to college or become an adult to be confident, to know your worth, to, to understand who you are as a young lady, um, becoming a woman. And so... This is a gift that God has given to me, and I'm in the process of working on it. So I guess you guys are, everyone is getting a little spill of what's going on. And maybe this was God's way of saying, I'm going to make you talk about it until you push it out. And so, you know, this is this is the journey that God has for me. And so I'm, I'm in the beginning stages of everything, but I am I'm definitely working on it and trying to be obedient to God himself. So. You are such a humble person and you've always been one that like take your own path. And I admire that you have this complexity to you because you have this soft spirit by day, guys, she's a probation officer, right? So you've got, you've got this authoritarian, right? <laughs> then you see her with her children. You see her within the church. You see her with her husband. You see her on the big screen. Cause we didn't mention that um, either. I've, 
it took me a while to watch Pearl, but to see you come alive from the woman that I know <laughs> to the actress on the screen, mm. I mean, God yeah. has poured something into you. And I'm so glad that you have taken the leap and not worried about um, the naysayers. Because I know you get, a, I'm, we all get a lot of that, right? And I want to bring this to the point. For women, we're sometimes the worst to one another, right? And I'd really love to see, and I think what you're what you're talking about, pouring into young girls at an early age can change the way that we actually treat one another. Because if I'm confident in myself, I learn how to love myself at an early age, I won't necessarily um, feel so, um, I won't feel like I have to be against you, you know? Um, as women, we need to come together and love on one another, support one another. I love what Kai said earlier that in Arkansas, if somebody you know is doing something, I don't know whether they're mud pie building, I don't know, you go support them, right? And I think we need to get into more of that here in our communities, um, Deasia. So you know whatever it is that you do, Kaka, I'm there to support in any way um, that we can to ensure that you can be obedient and do what God is telling you to do. We've got um, kids killing each other in the mall. Yep. You, know, um, you think Wichita, Kansas, and you're like, where is that? But if you look us up on the map, you'll see that as far as crime and violence is concerned, we're in the top 20. So mm -hmm. I really think any program that we can provide to our youth right before depression has set in on them, before um, that feeling of inferiority has set in up on them. It's an awesome way to give God, to pour out to God and to be obedient. So I just love you. Um, it's been good to see people that look like me and no, no that's no shade in me not um, appreciating other minorities. But I tell you that as a black woman, it's so hard to find a place to where you can feel at peace to where you can feel like you belong. And this evening, just hearing the three of your stories, I've just been able to just sit back and, and, and relax and see um, God, God's work in you. So thank you for pouring out and sharing um, your stories with us this evening. It's 8-11, Pastor Kyle. Can you believe it? I cannot, and yet I can. <laughs> And we can't even blame it on Pastor Johnson. We need him no. back in order to keep us on track. <laughs> Don't tell him that. He might pop up at it anywhere. But ladies, I'm hoping that maybe we can get you guys to come back on and show parts of your gifts at one point in time. Um, I think it's important for you to, in order to be it, you have to see it, right? So, Brittany, I'm looking forward. I, you've only been here six to eight months. I, I, let me help, help. Let me be an ambassador for you of, of our city and um, introduce you and show you around, um, help partner you with, with, with people and organizations to support your efforts. So I look forward to um, hearing Tasha's. I pulled it up to Pastor Kyle, hearing it, purchasing it, if that's if it's available for us. And Sister Deasia, as I said, supporting you as well. I want to share before we close, and I want to pray over them, um, gentlemen, before we release them this evening. But um, I want to bring up Pastor Johnson's book. As you said, someone said it earlier. Well, look at you. There you go. Put, put it back up. I won't even put up the... There you go. I won't put up the flyer. Jesus Unchained by Robert Glenn Johnson. We are so proud of him. Um, he has uh, birthed it's an excellent discipleship resource, right? Mm -hmm. Especially for young people who are questioning, Brittany, um, where they are in their life and what God has in store for them. We're um, removing the barriers, removing the limitations that we've placed on God and allowing God, Jesus, to be who he truly is. So um, you can purchase it on inviteresources.com. You can purchase it on amazonresources.com. Amazon resources, amazon.com. <laughs> we ask that you leave a review on Amazon as well, because we want to ensure, you know, how all the algorithms work. We want to ensure that um, he's getting some um, traction for his, his, his work. And we want to ask that on June 5th, 
I don't have the flyer up, but he will be digging deeper into Jesus Unchained at the Kansas Leadership Center. Um, it will be uh, led and emceed by Ed O'Malley, who is the director of the Kansas, Kansas Leadership Center. So I invite you to come. I'm hoping that we will also have a um, virtual aspect of that evening. If you'd like additional information, please feel free to call St. Mark United Methodist Church at 316-681-2214. Um, you can inbox me on Facebook. You can inbox the St. Mark, um, St. Mark United Methodist Church Facebook page as well, and we'll get you some information to get you connected. Pastor Kyle, Pastor Kai, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Well, this yeah, I mean, um, I know we were running against the clock. Um, I would love to hear uh, if you, if any of you have like a one or two sentence little thing on just encouraging people to pursue their own creative outlets, uh, what would you say to, I, I think, well, I was going to say young people, but I think adults too. Uh, because right. I think adults uh, fail to find their creative outlets as well. So what, what, what would you say to somebody who is struggling to find their creative outlet? Um, I would say really fast that um, don't want to sound so churchy, but it who, is who I am. <laughs> but if you want to find, you know, your creativity, your creativity is found in the creator. So as you seek him, that's when you will really find all the wonderful treasures that God has on the inside of you. So seek the creator and you will find all the creativity that you need. Okay, Sister Tasha, that was a whole word in yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. A simple sentence for me is say yes to God. I'm actually reading a book about, I'm on the, I'm on the end of it. Um, I don't have the author at the at, at right now, but it is say yes to God or when a woman says yes to God. Mm. So anyone say yes to God. And once that happens, I think, you know, that's when the journey begins. Amen. It's simple as that. Say Amen. yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, and I, I agree with Tasha that like we're all made in the image of God. And I think that that shouldn't have to be so hard to be. If you are just a human being made in the image of God, you don't have to try so hard to do that. I think it's natural. So if you can rest back and know that you are, you're an image bearer of a creative God, mm -hmm. then you're naturally going to be creative if you don't hinder yourself with your own thoughts or hinder yourself with what other people might be thinking of you. Yeah. God was not second guessing what he was doing. He just did it. And there's some weird animals out there, but he made them. And if somebody was like, giving him critiques and he stopped and like we wouldn't have the angler fish in the, down in the ocean like we wouldn't have like you know pigeons giraffes. You know, so giraffes yeah. yeah it's like the weird stuff so it's like don't don't limit yourself because naturally your spirit is is in the image of god you have all the order and chaos that god had when he created the and the world too within you so just embrace both don't try to stick to one or the other just let them both exist together mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and what you say, too, about um, regardless of what other people think, because I think that hinders us so often, right? Oh, yes. Like when we're so self-conscious and, and you know, it, we, it, so we bottle up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, those are some good words. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm so excited. Uh, this has been so great. Uh, so many nuggets, I think, have been shared with people. Um, thank you all so much for coming and being part of our little live stream and for making such an impact on people. Uh, I tell folks all the time is that sometimes we think that we need we need to know the Bible front ways and backwards. Uh, we need to have the best singer, the best musician. We need to have the best AV. But quite frankly, you just need to have people with authentic hearts. Uh, the word says, if, if I be lifted up, then I'll draw all men unto me. And you all have shared your stories so authentically with such great transparency and to just hear what you're doing with your lives, how God is showing himself to be true and creative through you. You have truly been a breath of air today. Thank you all so, so much. Thank Brother Carl, would you like to cover them in prayer? Yes, please. 
God, we are thankful for tonight and to hear the stories of called and capable women of God who are pursuing you and have been in pursuit of you for uh, for a long time, but um, to hear also the ways that you have pursued them even longer. And we're so thankful for the encouragement to know that you are... Um, uh, able and desiring to use us and that you have uh, imprinted us with your creativity and your desire to uh, connect with um, in art and, and in such unique ways. And so I thank you for this conversation tonight and I pray that we would continue to feel blessed um, from having been uh, hearing from these women and uh, that this just sits deep into our souls. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. Don't forget to come back next week. Ignite will be back Wednesday at 7 p.m. We have a couple new guests that we have uh, lined up for you, continuing to celebrate women, uh, women of faith, and really, really just creating, creating space for us all to be together. So look forward to seeing you all next week. Tune in. Please do. Have a blessed week. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.